In this week's episode, Darren Lee talks to two Capri riders over a game of futsal. I'll be working up a sweat with the boys of the Petrona Sinti Moto Yamaha AHM team right here in Kuala Lumpur. Stick around as Melvin Moh of the Petrona Sintium team take me on a special hike. I'll be talking to Melvin Moh right here at Mount Fuji as we try to make our way up to the summit. I'm Julie Wood and this is Motorsports at Petronas. You gotta run, run, run. 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 Run, run, run. I'm right here in Kuala Lumpur's leading futsal venue to meet up with the guys. Now to me, futsal is football in its purest form, an essential precursor to what Pele would refer to as the beautiful game. It's also a great way to blow off some steam after a long day in the office. So let's catch up with the guys and see what's up. Futsal's origin can be traced back to South America in the 1920s as a solution to the lack of football fields. A combination of two Portuguese words, futebol de salão, which can be translated as indoor football. Two teams of five players demonstrate their skills and teamwork on a smaller pitch with a slightly weighted leather ball. Darren really worked up a sweat playing futsal with the Petrona Cynthia Moto Yamaha AHM's Ramdan Rosli and Muhammad Hafiz Nor Azman. Oh, thank you very much for the game, Ramdan. Let's take five minutes. You look like you need it. Not me, I'm cool. <laughs> so uh, I have with me, ladies and gentlemen, the CP130 rider for the Petrona Cynthia Moto Yamaha AHM team. Thank you very much for joining us here today. Straight up, first up, why two wheels and not four? Bagi Ramdan, ia lebih laju berbanding empat roda dan lebih mencabar sebab dia menggunakan gaya tunggangan dan dapat tengok seorang rider itu gaya tunggangan dia. Well, okay, tell us how did you make it into the world of motorsports? What was your first big break? Uh, Ramdan start berlumba 2009 uh, pada usia 13 tahun dan saya berlumba dalam uh, Capri dan berlumba sebagai seorang privateer dan Ramdan juga pernah menjadi juara dalam uh, kategori Wira di situ uh, saya diberi peluang oleh Petronas untuk masuk ke dalam tim Petronas dan uh, saya juga telah mendapatkan dan menghadiahkan uh, kemenangan uh, untuk pasukan Petronas So now, in your opinion why do you think the Cup Pre is so popular among the Malaysian two-wheel fans? Uh, bagi Ramdan, sukan pengukuran dua roda di Malaysia ini popular disebabkan mungkin uh, dia orang tengok uh, sukan pengukuran di Malaysia ini yang menggunakan jentera yang sama yang digunakan oleh uh, mereka ketika pergi kerja dan di, mungkin di situ lah lebih popular. So, memang bagi Ramdan memang bagus lah kerana dapat uh, peluang lah untuk berlumba dan memang popular di, di Malaysia ini. So I guess people can really relate to that. Tell us, who is your idol in the two-wheel racing world? I have an idol in the motor ini, Jorge Lorenzo. And he has a very smart and aggressive. So for me, I have made him as an idol for my future. All right, I hope you get to ride like him too. <laughs> So tell us what's after Capri for you. Bagi saya uh, selepas Capri ini mungkin saya harap uh, saya diberi peluang untuk berlomba di Europe uh, dalam uh, kategori 100cc dan 250cc. So saya harap uh, saya diberi peluang 
untuk Petronas supaya saya dapat berlumba di Europe satu hari nanti. Well, we all hope that you get the chance to go to Europe too, man. Well, thank you very much, Rondan, and we hope the best for you for the next season. I'm going to have to catch up with your teammates, so I'll catch you in five. Cool? Thank you. I have here with me Hafez No Asman, who's a CP115 rider for the Petrona Cynthia Moto Yamaha AHM team. Thank you so much for joining us here today. Now, tell us something a little bit about yourself, something that the viewers don't know. Yeah, uh, saya berumur 17 tahun dan saya berasal daripada Ipoh, Perak. Saya masih bersekolah di College Vocational Lubuk Kata Ipoh. Saya banyak mempunyai hobi yang saya sangat suka, lah, hobi yang ekstrim seperti uh, berkayak, uh, menunggang motocross dan me memasuki pembuatan jamburi mountain bike. But you're a, you so you're a sportsman. You love yeah. all things sports. Yeah. <laughs> well, tell us how did you finally decide that you want to ride professionally and you want to become a professional rider? Pada tahun 2012, uh, saya mengambil langkah untuk uh, bersama pasukan uh, tim MOS Strat Pro Yamaha Racing untuk menung, uh, berlumba secara profesional di mana saya pada waktu itu menyertai kategori Wira dan saya telah memenangi kategori tersebut uh, juara overall uh, kategori Wira pada tahun 2012. Oh, okay. What about racing that you love so much? Saya sangat suka kain kelajuan uh, ketika di dalam seleko. So saya rasa lagi laju lagi saya suka. Well, tell us about your your idol. Who's your idol and why? Saya sangat meminati Jorge Lorenzo kerana beliau mempunyai sifat yang sangat uh, fokus ketika racing dan beliau juga mempunyai strategi yang sangat berguna dan uh, itulah salah satu kejayaan beliau untuk mendapat overall. Now back to why you chose to become a professional rider. Why two wheels and why not four? Saya rasa uh, jentera dua roda lebih mencabar. Seperti yang saya cakap tadi, saya sangat suka suka yang ekstrim. Uh, so saya rasa dua roda ni saya sangat mencabar dan saya ingin mencuba untuk atasi kereta kita saya. Now, there's something about Malaysian riders. They're very good under wet conditions. And Hafiz Sharin demonstrated this in his stint in the wild card in the Moto2. Tell us your opinion on this. Uh, saya rasa uh, mungkin disebabkan di Malaysia mempunyai cuaca di mana kami pelumba-pelumba uh, Capri selalu berlumba di dalam keadaan hujan yang lebat. So, seperti Hafiz Sharin juga, mungkin tiada masalah bagi beliau untuk uh, berlumba dalam keadaan yang hujan. Lah. Well, I hope you do just as well as Hafiz and we wish you all the best. Let's get back to the game. You right. ready? Let's yeah. go, let's do this. Okay, guys, thank you so much for letting me hang out with you guys. But before I let you go, we have one last special treat for both of you, all right? And it's called Motorsports at Petronas Rapid Fire Q&A. So this is how it goes. I'm going to fire off 10 questions. And let's see which one of you gentlemen will get it right in time. Ready? Gentlemen, start your engines. Yeah. First question. Who rides with the number 69 in MotoGP? You can get it. Ooh, <laughs> both got it right at the same time. Second question. Valentino Rossi won his first 125cc World Championship riding what bike? Aprilia. You guys both got it right at the same time. How amazing. All right, next question. The Petronas Twin Towers has got how many floors? It is. Ding. All right, fourth question. Jorge Lorenzo won the MotoGP Championship in 2010. At which circuit did he win this title? It's both right. No worries. Next question. Both right. Next question. Name the circuit in round 14 of the MotoGP calendar. Montegi. Montegi. Both wrong. It's Motolan Aragon, guys. No problem. No problem. No problem. Name Malaysia's youth and sports minister. Yang berhormat, Kairi Jemrudin. You guys both got it right. You guys both got it right. 
Name the three disciplines in the Ironman Triathlon. Swimming, cycling, cycling, running. You got it right. Now it's equal. <laughs> it's equal. Number eight, Zizou is the nickname for which French football? Zidane, Zidane. 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 <laughs> you guys both got it right. Number nine, name the Malaysian national flower. What are you? Both right. All right, guys. Last question. Whoever gets this right will win the title. Okay? And it's a toughie. In the entire GP history, only three riders went to win the world championship for that season without ever falling off their bikes. Cito Ponce and Valentino Rossi were the first two to ever do so. Name me the third rider and which year he did that in. Stoner. Casey Stoner? Stoner, Stoner. Casey Stoner. That's right, Casey Stoner. But yeah. who, in which year, did he do that in? 2007. He's got it right, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> we have a winner, the title winner. Thank you so much. But to tell you, frankly, there's no winner. You guys are both winners, and we hope for the best for the next season for both of you. Thank you so much for joining us, guys. All right, guys, that's it from me. I hope you enjoyed the show. You want to catch the boys in action? Watch the next Cup Prix when it comes to your town. Catch you later. I'm in Gontemba, and right behind me is Mount Fuji. And you can see the top of Mount Fuji right above the clouds. It's a perfect weather. I'll be making my way right over there to meet up with Petronas Sintium Team's Melvin Mo for a hike up Mount Fuji. In fact, maybe all the way up to the summit, just for Melvin. Recognized as a UNESCO World Heritage Site, Mount Fuji is the highest mountain and one of the three holy mountains of Japan. At 3,776 meters, this near-perfect cone is an active volcano that last erupted in 1707. Mount Fuji is divided into 10 stations, with the foot of the mountain being the first and the tenth being the summit. A national symbol, it is immortalized in countless works of art. This is the Fujinomiya Trail, as you can see over here. It is one of the four fifth stations located at different sides of the mountain. And right over here, it says we're 2,380 meters above sea level. And it would take approximately four to maybe five hours to reach the summit right here, the summit of Mount Fuji. Well, I think Melvin will be here any time now, but I would have to discuss with him again about our prior arrangement. Four to five hours. Look at that, all the way. Marvin, thanks for being on the show. Put it there. No problem. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's so cool right here. Yeah. And did you even know that it takes about seven to eight hours to climb up to the summit of Mount Fuji? Uh, yeah, yeah, for sure. I mean, it's uh, quite high up. So yeah, it's always one of my bucket lists. And I always wanted to do it. OK, yeah. you can do it. I'll wait for you here <laughs> no after <problem>. the show. <laughs> OK, so let's find out a little bit more about you. You know, how did it begin for you? You know, when was it that you decided this is what you wanted to do for a living? Uh, to be honest, I was interested in motorsports when my dad brought me to Formula 1 for the first time when uh, F1 came to Sepang in 1999. Whoa, long time ago. Yeah, so from that time on, you know, I just got hooked onto it and, uh, you know, I, I gained my interest from there. And then from there, I started go-karting and so on and here I am in today. Ah, I mean, you've come a long way since 1999, yeah. but I'm sure you've been asked this many times. Okay. But do tell me honestly, okay? Like, give me the actual lowdown. Was it difficult for you to break into the racing world? At that time, I was what, 12, 13 years old, and yeah. uh, I didn't know much about karting and all. Uh, so we just, my dad just took me to for fun karts, and from that time on, uh, we found out about a championship uh, in uh, Malaysia. And from then on, uh, you know, I started finding out more about go karts and. Uh, and started participating in races and then I was thankfully in 2006 uh, Petronas came out with the Petronas Formula Experience yeah. and from then on you know I knew there was a good opportunity for me to move forward in motorsports. Yeah it was a sign. Yeah. So everything just fell into place for you? Yeah sort of I could say timing was right you know yeah. for me and yeah it was good. 
So you've been racing in the Super Taiki yeah. Championship for over four years now, and you started as the cadet driver for the team in 2009. So do you see yourself racing in other championships, or do you think you're made for endurance racing? I started in PFX, uh, and after that, uh, I did Formula BMW after that. So, yeah, I mean, endurance racing is also another, requires another discipline, but it depends where the opportunity arises. I mean. As long as it can continue as a racing driver, I think it doesn't matter what series or what championship I, I drive. Ah, uh, no wonder, because my next question is, you still compete in karting championships. Yes. So, is that your first love? For me, karting is as an extra driving time for me um, yeah. to, to help with my racing here in Japan. So, no matter what kind of racing, it doesn't matter as yeah, long as you're matter, behind yeah. a wheel. Yeah, to have more driving time in, mm, basically. Looking like a true motorsports enthusiast. Well done. <laughs> and how has racing helped you as an individual? Well, good question. But, uh, <laughs> well, I think being in racing, I mean, one part of it is uh, being uh, fit enough to drive the cars. Yeah. So, and also be very disciplined. So, yeah, I think it taught me to be. You know, taught me more about the fitness side as an as, uh, individual. I mean, mm -hmm. not just for driving, but for me generally as well in, yeah. in life. So, you, you really have to have a proper attitude to approach things. And that's also the same in life. So, I think that really helped me as a person. So, what do you think um, would be the three things that a racing driver would need in order to succeed? You know, and you can elaborate on that. Uh, for sure, number one, I think, would be consistency. I mean, you need to perform week in, week out, you know, giving your best. Well, secondly, I think, would be, I think you need to be hardworking as well. You really need to put in effort, uh, not just come to the track and drive and go back and, and party or, or whatever. <laughs> I mean, Living the life of a true race. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you really need to put in effort behind the racing scenes. Uh, Number three, I would say the passion. I mean, when you have passion, I think things are easier. You would naturally put effort into it. So I think that's the three yeah. attributes I think you need as a driver. You can't let the passion die, yeah, right? true. Okay. And um, also, what would be a great season for you? I mean, of course, winning every race, but what would be the perfect season? Um, well, as you said, winning the championship would be good, would be the perfect season, but for me personally, is every race has to perform my best. And, you know, if I knew that I, in every race I gave my all, I think that would be perfect for me. Yeah. yeah. Regardless. Re whether. Regardless what what the result is, you know. So you are the product of the Petronas Formula Experience Racing School, and um, you're the first PFX driver to take a race victory in Formula BMW. That must have felt really great. Yeah, I mean for. For the program, for everybody in Petronas, I think it was very important and it was important for me as well to, to show that the program was uh, effective. So yeah, I was quite pleased and was very lucky and fortunate to be the first one. Ooh, well yeah. done! Okay, last question. You know, when the lights fade and the cheering dies down, what's next for Melvin Mo? Well, for sure, if it's possible, I would like to stay in motorsport, maybe more to the management side, maybe manage a driver, a team or even driver coaching, you know, or to even bring up the young drivers, you know, so yeah. to teach them, to guide them. So I think that would be one possibility. Yeah. But other than motorsport for now, Nothing. I wouldn't know. I Honestly, if you ask me, I wouldn't know. Okay, let's see whether you can do the rapid fire Q&A just as well, okay, <laughs> as you do on a racetrack. Have you heard of uh, this before, the rapid fire Q&A? No. Simple, uh, I, you know. I, I ask you a question, you answer okay, it. Okay, sure. And I give you points. All right. And the winner, well, I don't know. We'll think about it later, okay? okay. You ready? You ready? Make sure you got to show these people, okay? You know the answers, <laughs> okay? Question number one. In what year did Lewis Hamilton made his Formula One debut? Uh, <laughs> 2007? Yeah! Uh, Was that a guess or you knew it? Because uh, Raikkonen won in 07, so yeah. Well, you know your stuff. Okay, question number two. Nicky Lauda was a Formula One driver from before, right? Yes. How many times did he win the World Championship? Nicky Lauda. Uh, two? Uh, three times? Three, three times? Yeah, Are three. you sure? Yeah, three. You sure? Yeah. Man, you're good! <laughs> two points to you. Oh my gosh. Name the lead singer for the band Maroon 5. Uh, 
Ah. Adam Levin. Oh ah. my gosh, unbelievable. <laughs> Petronas is short for. Okay, if you get this wrong, I've got to kick you off this cliff. I don't know. Nah, I'm just kidding. <laughs> uh, Petroleum <laughs> National Berhad. Well yeah. done. You got four out of four right. Okay. So far, nobody How many has. Questions are there? Ten questions. Ah, okay. Nobody has gotten all right. Okay, let's see whether you could. How many red and white stripes are there in the Malaysian flag? Red and white. Yeah, how many so red? Total how many there's white? 14. So half, half, seven red, seven white. <laughs> Respect. Okay. Five points. Five out of five. Five out of five. Okay, this is simple, okay? okay. If you like boxing. Which boxer said, I float like a butterfly, sting like a bee? Boxer? Yeah, which boxer? The only boxer I know is Muhammad Ali. <laughs> is Man, it? this guy's good. <laughs> Let's just cancel that and give him all 10 points. <laughs> You're absolutely right. Okay, next question. Name the superhero that lives in Gotham City. Dark Knight Batman, huh? <laughs> <laughs> this is going to be a toughie, okay? Name the guy that jumped out from near space and broke the sound barrier. Uh, the Red Bull guy, but I don't know his name. <laughs> <laughs> you can't cheat. What's his name? I don't know. Uh, I know he's from Red Bull, but I can't remember his name. <laughs> it's Felix Baumgartner. Uh, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so it's seven out of eight. Not bad, not All bad. Right. You're still the champion of rapid fire QA. <laughs> okay, next question. Which city will host the 2020 Summer Olympics? Japan, Tokyo. Mm, well done. Okay, name me three English F1 drivers, past and present. So, present you, Hamilton. You can mix, yeah, okay, Hamilton. Jensen Button. Jensen Button. Uh, past uh, Nigel Mansell. Nigel, okay, well done! Okay, one more question, because you got 9 out of 10 right. Okay. I'm going to give you one bonus question, okay? So if you get this right, you get 10 points. Champion, huh? Champion. Okay. How many floors are there in the Petronas Twin Tower? 80 something, but I don't know 80 what? Just guess! 88? Why do you choose 88? Because I'm born in the year of 88. <laughs> Is that your final answer? I think so. <laughs> you got to be absolutely sure. Yeah, sure. The it best. Is? Well done, man. Really 88? It's 88. <laughs> now you know you uh, won in the year 88. Yeah. So I just guessed 88. That is your lucky number. Oh my gosh, you got 10 questions correct. Nobody even uh, came close. Seriously, good, good. I think at least like six out of ten was like our best record so far. Six out of ten, who was that? Oh, I can't remember. <laughs> Somebody else. <laughs> but I know well done. Congratulations. I hope you do as well on the track as you do in our rapid fire. I hope Q&A. so. And um, I'm sure I'll see you on top, yeah? Good yeah. luck, all the best. Thanks. Thanks. Okay, now make your way up to your bucket list. You know, coming? No, no, it's your you bucket must list. Come. No, you I'll must. take your picture from you, here. You come. Come. Yeah. <laughs> Run up there. Run? You can do it, come on Melvin. All about fitness. No, I'm too old, huh? No, you're not. Go. I'll, I'll be there. In a jiffy. Go. Bye. <laughs> Melvin Moe is one guy who knows what he wants and goes for it. A true believer that hard work will take you places. I'm Chili Woon. Support your local talents, guys. Don't forget to log on to www.patmos.com.my to find out more about your favourite teams, drivers and race results. Catch you again next week on Motorsports at Petronas. Yo! Sorry, that... Sorry. Ladies and gentlemen, I have here with me Ramdan Rosli, the CP130 rider for the Petronas Cynthia Motor... Whoa! I have here with me Hafiz Noor Asman, who is the CP115 rider for the Petronas Cynthia Moto. I should read his. The yeah. team in 1990. 2009. Yeah, <laughs> I should have done that again. <laughs> You're an old man now, no, so no, no, your no, 40s. Okay. <laughs>